Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony Russell Wilson says he's feeling lean and mean. How you feel? Tony Kornheiser, lumpy and grumpy. And at least Russell Wilson isn't saying, let's ride like he did last year, which was a disaster. A disaster. Yeah. Or go Hawks. I got tired of that too. You know, yeah. I'm just feeling I'm just feeling mean. That's all. Just yeah. mean. Well, you've, I'll you've take been feeling mean for about five years. I mean, you're yeah, good at it. That it's long. what you do well. Three Hell years. Oh, yeah. Uh, five. Welcome to PTI, boys <laughs> and girls. It's today's episode. How will the Heat handle the loss of Gabe Vincent? How would LeBron look as a warrior? And are the Angels' chances of keeping Shohei increasing? But we begin today with the Florida Panthers getting a Matthew Kachuk goal with just 4.9 seconds left last night to beat Carolina 4-3 to three and sweep them out of the playoffs. Florida now advances to the Stanley Cup Final for the first time since 1996. Well, Bond, in a Final Four that had seemed glamorless, have Kachuk and the Panthers won you over? Tony, I don't know that I'm going to think of them as glamorous, but yeah. I mean, what is it, 10 of 11 now? And like more than five of those are, have been won in overtime and they're all one goal games except a game or two. I mean, yeah. this yeah. and he particularly yeah. owns the postseason so far. He he, he owns it. And you, you, you know, I turn in now to them. I'll click in whenever I can. And out here, the games are on preposterously early at like 5 p.m. I click on and Florida's ahead, and Kachuk has either done something that's like Gretzky-like or is going to do, on the verge of doing it, and usually late and likely in overtime. And, again, I don't know that it's glamorous, but they've won in a way that makes you want to see them. You're curious about them. And an otherwise glamorless team, you say, okay, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me watch yeah. the Florida Panthers, which I can't believe I'm saying out loud. I think that Kachuk has absolutely been amazing. He has three game-winning goals in this series out of four, and in the other game, he had an assist on the only goal of the game in a one nothing game. He's got Conn Smythe tattooed on his forehead right now. Yeah. And as amazing as he has been, to your point earlier, I think the team he plays for has been more amazing. They have, and I'll give you the numbers, they're 11-1 and in their last 12 playoff games. They're 9-1 and one in one-goal games. They're 6-0 and oh in overtime games. Mike, they're an 8 seed. They've taken out a 1, a 2, and a 4, and I don't know how you can't root for them. I was impressed with what Rob Brindamore said. He's coached Carolina after the game. Well, he was praising his own team, and he said, look, we didn't get swept. We were in every game. Every goal was a one-goal game. A one goal game. One we goal didn't game, yeah. lose. We got beat. So there he's praising both teams. And, and to me, Mike, the reality is they did get swept. Florida goes out there with every opportunity and wins. And, Mike, Florida wasn't assured of making the playoffs until the next to last game when your Chicago Blackhawks beat Pittsburgh and kicked Pittsburgh out, and it fell to Florida. Yeah, and it scared me when the Blackhawks won because I wanted Bedard so well, you got the that pick. we got him anyway. We got you him got anyway. You got the pick anyway. But, Tony, you got the Tony I, I – they, and they remember, they came back from 3-1 down to beat the Bruins. Against Boston. Who only had yes. the greatest season ever, and yet – I think they've been great. I, I'm going to be rooting – I'm going to be rooting for what I think is the Vegas Knights. The no, Vegas no, Knights in the Stanley mistake. Cup final. Making I will. I'm not Let's doing move. I-95 on like you. Oh, God. Let's move to the NBA playoffs. <laughs> Miami starting guard Gabe Vincent is out for tonight's Game 5 in Boston with a sprained ankle. He's averaging 18 points a game in this series. He's shooting 50% from three. Wilbon, with this development for Miami, what chance do you now give the Celtics to win tonight, push the series to six games? Tonight, game five in Boston, where they haven't even played all that well in the playoffs over the last two years, I'm still going right. to give them like an 80% chance, Tony. I mean, I know people really? don't know who okay. Gabe Vincent is unless they're watching basketball year long, and particularly over the last month or so, because Gabe Vincent was, I'm not going to say he was a bit player, but he was an important player to a degree. But then when you lose Victor Oladipo and Tyler Hero, 
Gabe Vincent's minutes go up and his production goes through the roof. He's reliable. This is what, when people talk about the Heat culture, and culture is the most overused word in sports, but when they talk about this for the Heat, they're talking about largely player development and people who come in and there's a certain psychology and a certain emotion about them and clearly an ability to be coached, to take coaching and criticism and, 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 and fit in a way they might not fit in another organization, to borrow that word from hockey. Tony, it, he's important. I'm not saying they can't win without him, but it's, it's harder to yeah. win. And you have no more guards. You have no additional guards on the roster. All right. So let me be very clear in this. Regardless of Vincent's status, all the pressure, 100% of the pressure, is on Boston. There is yes. no pressure on Miami. That will change if Boston wins this game, but Boston has to win this game to make it change. As you say, when you don't have Oladipo, when you don't have Tyler Hero, and now you don't have Vincent, that's about 50 points. You lose about yeah. 50 points. Yes. So if Boston can't win this game at home, they can't win any game. And the problem, as you alluded to, is home. They're four and six in these playoffs this year at home. They're 0 and 2 in game fives in these playoffs. Do I think they're going to win? I do. I think they're going to win. But nobody in America who's watching this is going to be surprised if they don't win because because of the way they've played up until this point. I think they're the better team. I think they should have won by now. I don't know what's going on in this thing. They had Jason Tatum had 51 in a game last week. They got yeah. two guys, Smart and Brown, who played in over 100 playoff games. Yeah. The only thing that but stops the them tonight is, is if Jimmy Butler goes insane. If Jimmy Butler well, he, goes he, insane. He could, but the thing about Tatum and Brown is, until the other night, Tony, they're just taking turns. And there's not the kind uh -huh. of play there that I associate with all the Boston Celtics teams of my whole life. Now, even when Larry Bird was there and a high-volume shooter and had the ball in his hand, usage was high, there was no feeling that they, he was just taking turns with somebody. They played the consummate team basketball. The Celtics just did that in Game 4. Let's see if they can do it at home in Game 5. We'll see. We'll see. Let's move to LeBron's future with the Lakers. This is a topic that's going to wear us out over the next three months. Kevin O'Connor of The Ringer wonders whether we could see LeBron getting himself traded to the Dubs, the Warriors. LeBron has openly talked about wanting to play with Draymond and Steph, and the trade could bring young players and picks back to the Lakers. Tony, would you like to see LeBron with the Warriors, and would that make them the favorites or just, just geezers, just old? Well, they're not as old as us, but, yeah, they would be very, very old. Here's the thing. This came out of the blue today to me. It's a complete surprise, but I, I will indulge the story because it's not like LeBron hasn't moved in the past. And it's right. not like LeBron has any particular allegiance to the Lakers. LeBron has an allegiance to LeBron. I think this would be fun for this reason, Mike. You talk about a last dance. You got Curry and Thompson and Green who are old, and you add LeBron who is older, older than them. Old like dest. You would have yeah, you would have games starting at 6 after the pregame meal, you know, the early bird. And it would be great for me. Kevin Durant went to the Warriors a few years back and he won. And he was criticized for sort of glomming on. I don't think that would happen to LeBron. Because LeBron oh, sure is so old with limited, no, I think it's limited opportunity. He only has a year or two at best. So I think he could get away with it. And plus, it's a perfect fit because as we talk about all the time, the Warriors are a selfless team. And LeBron is, in fact, a selfless player. Yeah, all that's true, Tony. All that's true. He would be ripped by a lot of people because it'd be a second time in his life that he had to go tag team with people to win a championship. I, 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 I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that, but that would happen, and, and, and justifiably so, for people who say, no, no, no. Now, I got a better thing than that. Draymond Green can go play with the Lakers. I mean, if you put Draymond Green on the Lakers with Anthony Davis and LeBron, you're talking about something. You're talking about elevation in the Western Conference. And I know the, the Lakers were just that's in the Western Holmes. Conference Finals. Yeah. It is, Tony. So, I, to me, that's more attractive than LeBron going really? to play with Golden State. Yeah, yeah. Going to play with be. Steph Curry? Really? And Clay Thompson? Yeah. I don't, oh, really? Yeah. I don't need to see that.
You know what I never wanted? I never wanted when the Bulls lost to the Pistons. I never sat around going, well, if Jordan played with Isaiah and Buddha and that big thug Bill Lane Beer, I never thought about that. Play where you play. Get it done where you are. That's I'm yes, I'm old and mean. So I don't care That's, to see people. It's more than old and mean. Country. I mean it, it's it's sort of denying people the chance to go where they want to go and, and, when, and have an impact. Where you are. If you're the okay. GOAT, if you're the GOAT, why so, do you need right, Steph so you, Curry? So this is huh? what you're saying. You're saying LeBron is a cheap opportunist. That's essentially no, what I'm hearing. No, let's I'm take saying a break. I, I, I defend LeBron. Well, I'm hearing decision to go. He's moved but around. Don't expect he's me to been crazy if they win. He's been a Hessian every single stop along it's fine. the way after the first clue. Let's take a Just break. Just don't expect me Coming to up, love it. How should the Angels front office feel about Shohei's future? God, it's worse than Aaron Rodgers' future and LeBron's future, Sohei's future. And what does it mean for Novak Djokovic to be on the same side of the draw as world number one, Carlos Alcaraz? I mean, Shohei. Do want people moving from team to team? Oh, I'm, I'm, ever? I, it doesn't mean I Will have to pray. Time to trade words with Will Bond. What's first? After sweeping the Red Sox, the Angels' front office must be feeling blank. So my word is queasy. I think it's great that they beat a team with a winning record. I think it's wonderful that Otani and Trout both hit home runs. But where does it leave them in terms of the playoffs right now? They're still out. If you started the playoffs today, they would be out. They're in third place in their division. They're behind Texas. They're behind Houston. At least two teams in the American League East are ahead of them for the wild card. I mean, this matters. If, if, you, if you feel that you have to make the playoffs in order to keep Shohei Otani, then what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything at the moment. And it still looms out there, the trade deadline, where the Angels can say, we're going to trade him because he's going to go to free agency and we're going to get nothing. August 1st. And because it means nothing, as you just said, the front office must be feeling delusional. Because the A's, <laughs> the Angels, they're about like the A's now. The Angels never make the playoffs. They don't make it. It's been a long right. time since they made it. Even though they either develop Trout or attract Otani and your boy Anthony Rendon, they attract Rendon some star players. They got a roster yep. right. Rendon hasn't been what he was in Washington, obviously. Yeah. But, Tony, they're delusion. They're, I mean, why would you think the Angels are going to make the postseason? And they got to make a decision before then anyway if it's true that a playoff run is what is going to attract or really influence Otani. Yeah. I mean, we don't know that yeah. anyway. So delusional but, is all they got. What's next? It's next. blank for Novak Djokovic that Carlos Alcaraz is on his side with the men's French Open draw. So my word is unsettling. You know, um, Alcaraz is the number one seed. You got to figure if you're anybody else in a tournament, you say to yourself, well, at some point, I got to beat this guy. You know, so you understand that. But it's different if you meet him in the finals. Because first of all, you're in the finals. And then if you beat him, you actually win the tournament. It's a little dicier if you have to meet him before the finals. It makes the road that you look at ahead a little bit harder. They've only played once. And it happened to have been on clay. And Alcaraz beat him on clay. And, and I'm told that that Djokovic now has elbow problems. But I'm, I'm going to get off this to get to my main feeling about the French Open. Nadal's not playing, Mike. It's the first time in 19 years. He's won the thing 14 times. It's hard for me to imagine a French Open without Rafael Nadal. Well, we just go back to 20 years ago. You and I have been watching the French Open for 50 years, and Nadal wasn't yes. in it. So I can imagine. I hear what you're saying, though, Tony. It's a less attractive tournament right now. And then in a couple of yeah. years, Nadal will be doing TV and, and, you know, in the booth and we'll be used to it completely. But my word is it means early curtains for Djokovic. That's what being in the side of the draw with Alcaraz does. Because he's got to play him around earlier than he would have to play him, as you just outlined. So it means he's going yeah. out earlier. It's over for Djokovic. Age injury, just like it was over for Federer, and now it looks over for Nadal. Joker yeah. is the latest of the three and held on a little bit longer. I don't think he's going to get another slam uh, tournament championship really? tone. So it's, it's early curtains. Good night. He won't even be around for the um, finals. 
Am I hearing cheap opportunist, or was that in the segment prior to this? That's the final word. Let's take one last break. Still to come, how concerned should the Raiders be that your boy Jimmy Garoppolo needed foot surgery? And should the NBA increase the penalty for flopping? No, it should be pointed out that Wilt and Kareem won where they were. First, they won. They didn't go seeking tag like, team partners until didn't, after Didn't Djokovic they won. just win the Australian Open? Didn't Djokovic just didn't say, win another I didn't major? Say he was, I didn't say he was. You said he's cheap done. Opportunist. He's done. You said he's now, done. We just he's won done. the last one. Happy time, people. Happy 44th birthday, Chris Young. Young made history at Princeton when in his freshman year he became the first person ever named Ivy League Rookie of the Year in two sports, basketball and baseball. At six foot ten, Young opted for baseball, perhaps thinking six ten coming at you from sixty feet away is the golden ticket. Now, at one point, the Sacramento Kings offered Young a guaranteed contract, but by then he was on his way to the majors with the Texas Rangers. Young pitched thirteen years, five different teams. His record was seventy nine and sixty seven, with a three nine five ERA. He was an All Star once. He was on the two thousand fifteen Kansas City World Series champs. More importantly, I guess Young is now general manager. For the first place, Texas Rangers, and he's the guy who brought in Corey Seager and Jacob Degrom. Most importantly, he played still at the end of a time where talented kids played multiple sports, and now the coaches, the adults, won't let them. Oh, you've got to be in yeah. off-season training, OTAs. The NFL gave us that garbage, and now every sport they pin these kids down for all year with one sport. That's not the way it's supposed to happen, adults. You listening, Matthew? Happy anniversary, right, not Todd and Mel Stottlemyre. On this day 26 years ago, while pitching for the Cardinals, Todd won his 100th career game, making Mel and Todd the first father and son to each win 100 games in Major League Baseball. Mel made five All-Star games in his 11 season with the Yankees. He went on to great success as a pitching coach. He first won a World Series ring with the Mets, and then four more with the Yankees. Todd pitched 14 seasons in the bigs. He won two World Series rings with the Blue Jays. They combined for 302 wins. Mel had 164. Todd had 138. Baseball is awash with fathers and sons at the positions. The Griffies, the Boons, the Bonses, the Guerreros. Far more infrequent as pitchers, Mike. Yeah, Tony, but if somebody told you Todd playing with the Blue Jays was going to win more championships as a player, then Mel playing in the 60s and 70s with the Yankees, you would say there's no chance of that yet. He can look at this old man and say, yeah, you got it as a coach. I got it, as Tiger would say, in the dirt. In the dirt. Happy trails to flopping in the NBA. The Athletic is reporting that the NBA Competition Committee is discussing the potential of penalizing deliberate flops by awarding the other team a technical free throw. They could give this a trial run at Summer League. Now, years ago, this would have been called the Vlade Divac rule, as he was a renowned flopper. A potential problem with this is the lack of uniformity in applying the rule. It might depend on how well a player sold the flop to avoid the technical. And in a way, it might make referees more like judges on Dancing with the Stars. Well, man, you like a good flop, don't you? I do, and I don't want to see this. It's just going to be more replays. And please, a any, any contact between Shaquille O'Neal and anybody else is not a flop. I mean, he, come on, he was the biggest, strongest guy in the world. And if he hits you, you're going down. No, I don't want to, no, at least stay out of the judging flop business. Stop it. So, so to me, what this is, first of all, it is going to be a judgment call. It's like rosin. Oh, a little rosin is okay, but do you have too much? I think you have too much rosin. I mean, nobody really yeah. knows. And, and the yeah. other part of this to me is it's another anti-defense rule. You know, I mean, really, it is the attitude that the offensive player has the right to do just about anything because you're basically saying everybody who falls down is flopping, right? And I don't believe that. Do you? Yeah, and suppose you're just off balance and a guy catches you. That can happen yeah. st standing on the subway. Stop, stop, seriously, yeah. stop. So, uh, let's go to the big finish. Clippers GM it. Michael Winger is leaving to become president of the group that owns the Wizards. Do you find this significant? I guess so, but the Clippers have got a new arena in L.A. They still got more promise than the Wizards. Unless you're being pushed out, I, I, I kind of don't understand it. New Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo had foot surgery after he signed. Cause for concern. Yes. 
He gets hurt a lot. At some point, you can't play anymore. You keep getting hurt. Twins reliever Yoan Duran to three pitches at 104 miles per hour Man. or better yesterday. You're impressed, right? Fastest in the bigs this season, according to the gun. Is he the new Aroldis Chapman? I'm just wondering. Rubber match between the O's and Yanks tonight. Who you got? I got the O's, hon. And the Orioles have turned it around in two years beyond what anybody could have expected. Really. Last one, will you Golden Knights sweep the Stars? Yeah, I think so. And the Stars are missing their captain who got himself thrown out with the stupid move of cross-checking the guy in the head after knocking yeah, him down. Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, I'm really going to go dumb. with the sweep. Go in with the sweep. Really dumb. We're out of time. We will try and do better the next time. And I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, knuckleheads. You can get the PTI podcast on the ESPN app or Apple Podcasts. Wilt and Kareem won where they were. Don't ever forget that. They won first, then left. Uh, and now, yeah. sports. This.